out for free sales. Three minutes out. I knew I would be a journalist before high school. In grade school, I would win the spelling bee every week. By third grade, I loved words, and I knew that I wanted to do something with words. I loved to write, and by the time I got to junior high, I was involved in the school paper, I was editor, I was still writing a lot, and so by the time I got to high school, I was already well entrenched on a, on a course to journalism. Because there's something altruistic within us, something that wants we within us that wants to tell stories, that wants to right wrongs, and really, you know that you have no idea where the path is going to take you. The first coup against Corazon Aquino okay. in 88 or 89, um, I was sent there by my station in Hong Kong, okay. and um, I was almost right out of college, really, because um, there was no way I could have known two years earlier that I'd wind up in the Philippines covering a coup attempt. Yeah. Um, and I probably was ill-equipped to do that, <laughs> um, having only worked at an ABC station in northern uh, in Oregon. In situations like that. Yes, it's, it's dangerous. In fact, um, I met an Australian photographer who was later shot uh, because he, during the night, had used a flash and one of the soldiers shot him. I wasn't there at the time, but it, it was extremely dangerous. These rebel soldiers had M16s, they were, they were armed, I mean, with just ammunition around their bodies and, you know, it is quite clear how dangerous it is. But I think as a journalist, you're operating on your sense of wanting to tell the story that's before you. And also there's a sense, there's adrenaline that's running through you as you do all this. So it's definitely a strange combo. It's an incredible field to be in. That particular day, I was not even scheduled to anchor. Recapping now for you once again, if you've just joined us, an explosion underground in the garage section of the World Trade Center in New York City has killed now three people, according to the New York Port Authority, and has injured at least 150 people. Hundreds of people as we speak. Really people thought it was some type of um, transformer fire within the subway system, and everyone thought it was just a terrible accident, and that people, you know, were trapped downstairs with smoke. Only later throughout the day did we learn wow, this is a terrorist attack. And so as things unfolded, you know, you are still going on adrenaline and we're, we continue to get footage, we continue to get m more information from the World Trade Center. So before you know it, it's been eight hours and somebody else is finally there to replace you as the anchor. But that day, because it's the World Trade Center, every other station in New York City was knocked off the air because they have their transmitters on top of the World Trade Center. And I was the only one on because we were cable. It's amazing how they work in there. Um, but I think most people don't think about how much it takes to put a newscast together because you really only see, you know, two or three people. But there are so many more people behind the scenes. It takes so much. I came in originally um, out of the industry when I was, I was in the marketing. And I just wanted to do this, so I, you know. I freelanced for a couple of years. I was a GN making no money for two years. And then came over and started uh, working with the Directors Guild. That was about 
uh, 14 years ago. <laughs> and, you know, I'm one of the different people in the world. I actually came into Florida X because I figured you could learn everything from here. Then I went to, then I went to school. Well, I went, after I started working here, I went to school to learn audio and, and all everything else. So I'm a little different. Tell your people, this is not the way to go. It, it's those kinds of things that made it on the fly, especially like her going in two and a half minutes heavy today. She had to have a game plan as, okay, if, if, being, if I was to make up this time, and she yeah. had pad in there built in. But if she said, if I don't make up sure. this time, i got to figure out where I'm going to cut. I'm going to be yeah. involved in the taping of a Sunday show that's going to start about 3.30. I'm trying, that's what I've been doing in the meantime, getting ready for that. People assume because it's Fox News that we're told to, you know, report things a certain way. We are not. Yeah. It's we report, you decide. Yeah. At least, you know, here at Fox Chicago, I've never been yeah. told to report anything any particular way. Yeah. Which TV personality inspired you um, the most, other than Ron Burgundy? <laughs> Ron Burgundy? <laughs> um, Barbara Walters was the most preeminent, you know, person, woman on television. And then I watched a lot of Diane Sawyer. And it's funny because a lot of people, I don't know, have you guys even heard of Connie Chung? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she was on the air while I was growing up. And I think being adaptable is extremely valuable because the business is changing so freaking fast that you need to adapt. And if you can't adapt, freaking fast, you're not going to survive. Hey, you guys didn't ask me any questions about Patrick. So Nancy, what do you think about Patrick? Pat's the best. Lies! Even though he's a Sox fan. Yeah. I, I would rather have my work be a defining moment and, you know, sharing something important, sharing something that's life-saving. I mean, that's a, what draws a lot of us into the business of news, is just sharing information that may be important and may change lives.